I'm Skylar Frank, and this is the Military and Aerospace Electronics Last Word Video Supplement. With me today is David Kelly, CEO of Bluefin Robotics. So David, what's driving the interest behind autonomous unmanned vehicles? Well, Skylar, over the last decade, the technology has proven itself to be a cost-effective, efficient platform for subsea data collection. They've been used in the defense market for mine countermeasures, clearing ports and harbors, infrastructure protection. In the oil and gas and commercial industry, they've been used for pre- and post-construction subsea surveys, for pipeline tracking, archaeology and salvage. And then finally, in the research area, they've been used to research global climate change and the general warming of the earth. If you look in the defense market, uh, we currently have a developmental program for the United States Navy building a mine countermeasure mission module for the LCS ship, the littoral combat ship. On the commercial side, this past summer one of our vehicles was used to look for Amelia Earhart's plane in Nicomoro Island in the South Pacific, surveying on a 45 degree side of a, a underwater mountain. And then in the research arena, uh, this past summer, we were up in the Arctic working with the Alfred Wegener Institute on the, the life cycle at the ice edge and looking at the effects of global warming on Arctic sea life. And what are some of the challenges in designing autonomous unmanned vehicles? Well, if you look, your, um, the vehicles are designed to work in the ocean, which is a harsh and challenging environment. If you compare it to air or ground unmanned vehicles, there's a couple of different challenges. One is you're working at extreme pressures in a water environment. So that requires us to use pressure housings, uh, special underwater connectors, and other techniques designed to work at high pressure in a harsh environment. The other aspect of it is that the communications to the vehicle are extremely low bandwidth and intermittent. So unlike an air or a ground vehicle where you can rely on a high speed reliable data link, in the unmanned vehicles subsea, that data link is very slow. Think of a dial-up modem in the circa 1980. It's also intermittent. So therefore, the amount of uh, sophistication on the vehicle to deal with transient condition or unexpected conditions is higher than is typically found in other unmanned vehicles. Are there any trends on autonomous unmanned vehicle technology? I think there are three identifiable trends in underwater unmanned vehicle technology. One, driven primarily by the military, is a push, push to longer endurance. So to vehicles today typically can run for 24 hours, maybe a couple of a days. The military is desiring to get vehicles that can run for weeks or months at a time, uh, separating the UUV entirely from a surface ship or other tending vehicle. This will enable them to transit long distances into an area, to operate in those areas, and then to transit back and that's really the, the desired end state goal as stated by the CNO. In the commercial market, we're being driven to operate at even greater depths, talking 4,000, 4,500 meter depths. This is driven primarily in the oil and gas market by the deeper offshore work that's being done, the pre sols area in Brazil, other deep water environments, and in the nascent subsea mining industry, by the search for seafloor massive sulfide deposits, which typically occur at great ocean depths. Finally, there is an increased uh, drive towards more autonomy and more sophisticated behaviors out of the vehicles. Today's vehicles can go out and collect data in return. What tomorrow's vehicles want to do is to go out, collect data, then based upon that data, change their mission to perform different actions and provide a more general, uh, sophisticated capability to the user. Are there any developing technologies that are being used to achieve greater depth or endurance? There are some technologies that are being researched to achieve those goals. In the area of endurance, there are some new battery technologies that are being researched for application to the space. Um, the other arena for that would be fuel cell technology, which is an active area, multiple projects working on it that would enable greater energy to be carried on the vehicles to enable week and month long type of missions. For depth rating, the technology pretty much exists. The challenge is engineering a solution that meets the space and weight constraints of the unmanned undersea vehicles uh, for their application. Are there any problems in designing autonomous UAVs that comply with maritime law? That's an interesting area, Skylar. Initially, these vehicles were um, not used all that often. 
sort of a research area, but as they're gaining more general acceptance, the issue of uh, rules of the sea, navigational rules, and other regulations is coming up. There is active work both in the United States and abroad to look at this issue. In the United States, these regulations are primarily controlled by the Coast Guard, and internationally they're controlled by the IMO. And there is activity in both of those organizations to support uh, advancing or changing the regulations to enable unmanned vehicles to operate. So particularly critical when the vehicles are on the surface because they're going to be operating in areas with other manned craft, other manned vessels. This is an area that's of concern to the industry because if you look at what happened with unmanned air vehicles and the FAA where regulations were passed that severely restricted the use of unmanned vehicles in the U.S. airspace, uh, it could be quite a constraint on the growth of the industry. So the industry is actively working with the Coast Guard and these international bodies to address these issues, to evolve the capabilities of the vehicles uh, to comply with the rules and to evolve the rules to comply with both manned and unmanned vehicles working in these spaces. And I think if we work at it, we can find a successful solution that will enable both growth for the industry as well as safe, uh, compliant vehicles that meet the rules of the road. And do you have any market predictions for AUVs in 2013 and beyond? I think the AUV market in the undersea space will see a slow, steady growth. Uh, Ten years ago, when the, the modern UUV industry started, uh, there were legitimate questions as to whether or not the technology would really meet its uh, promise, uh, whether you could have economical, via viable platforms that would meet the needs of both defense and the commercial marketplace. I think that's been proven over the last decade, and what we're seeing now is evolution of those platforms, uh, greater market acceptance from both moving from the early adopter uh, to a broader market acceptance. But I don't think you'll see uh, the rapid growth that some saw in air or ground vehicles uh, occur in the undersea space. I think it's in a smaller market overall, and I think it'll be characterized much more by a slow, steady growth and evolution of the capability. Do you have any market predictions for AUVs in 2013 and beyond? I think we'll see slow, steady, continued growth in the market. The early adopters have proven the technology. I think both in the defense and the commercial realm, we're seeing a move towards a broader adoption of the technology, a press for new capabilities. I think if you compare the market overall, though, to air or ground vehicles, it's a much smaller market. It is a a challenging environment to work in and so I think what we'll see is a steady continued growth increase in the applications of the vehicles both commercially and in the defense realm and just a, a steady growth of the industry globally. Thank you for coming in. I'm Skylar Frank and this is the Military and Aerospace Electronics Last Word Video Supplement.